All right. We are recording. Um, as we typically do here, let me remind you um, of the uh, homework assignments. And um, so I've updated slightly there the um, um, due dates. So this is probably correct for the assignments that are listed. So that first extra credit assignment um, is uh, that will be due a week from today. So you still got plenty of time to work on that. But don't, uh, you know, don't wait to the last minute now, especially don't wait until uh, February 3rd, you know, at 11 p.m. And the reason that I'm recommending that is because um, the system gets really busy uh, around midnight because that's kind of the default due time uh, for assignments. You can switch that, but that's when you make an assignment. That's uh, the default that it puts there. And so a lot of uh, 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 people all over the country you know, will be working on their assignments, right? <laughs> like millions of people, um, you know, at, at around midnight, right, trying to finish them. And so the system will, uh, especially at the beginning of the semester, can get slow. So, um, so if you if you put this off, then um, although this is not a difficult assignment, if you put this off, then um, um, you know, you run the risk of not being able to finish it on time. Uh, however, on the other hand, a lot of people have already done that assignment with the, the 88 that's required for the extra credit. So I started updating the, um, uh, your uh, bank of calculus dollars already. Um, <clears throat> probably your grade is going to show zero. That's your final average. But, and so that's going to show zero until some things start becoming due and it's not really going to be uh, meaningful until the first test, that average, right? Um, I'm looking at my average, so, um, so mine's definitely zero because I haven't worked on these things. But um, uh, if you go to your uh, uh, My Assignments um, up there, it will show you, you know, your uh, scores on your various assignments. And so you can actually see where you're at on the... Um, uh, on the extra credit. So some people already have earned their $5 for that. Uh, uh, actually, some people already earned $10 uh, because they've done both of those extra credit assignments uh, that um, uh, that are shown there so far, right? Okay. So, um, and so the regular first homework assignment, we'll go ahead and make that do, so that's the uh, 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 function review. Uh, that's part one. So that one's due February the 3rd, and uh, remember this one is that long extra credit assignment. That was not due to the first test, but some people have already done that uh, and got their 82 already, so they already have money in the bank for that particular uh, extra credit assignment. Now, as of this morning, I had 32 people uh, uh, enrolled in the class, and so uh, if you're one of the ones listening to me who's not enrolled in the class, you need to get enrolled in the class. Remember, you still have a grace period until Monday. So um, uh, 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 that's free. OK, and then after Monday, that's when you'll have to uh, actually pay for the access code in order to uh, continue having access. But you can work on assignments uh, up until, uh, you know, Monday at least so you can finish your homeworks. Um, uh, that are due on Wednesday, you know, still during that grace period. So I strongly encourage you to get enrolled. So if you're not enrolled, I'm going to start looking you up and contacting you and asking you why you're not enrolled. Because remember, this is not an optional part of the class, okay? So you should be enrolled, and you should already be working on your assignments, okay? Right? And so do not put this off until next week. That's going to get you into a bad habit, all right? of putting off your assignments to the last minute, and that in the long run is not going to work, okay? So uh, so you need to get enrolled and get working, okay? Uh, even if you don't work on the extra credit, although I think that would be foolish to uh, throw away that, um, that extra credit, uh, uh, you've got to at least work on uh, that uh, first assignment, that part one uh, of the algebra review uh, that's due on uh, Wednesday, okay? Now, remember also, oops, I keep forgetting to update it. Um, hopefully I'll remember this time. Um, John is available after class. So John, our peer tutor, the one who is 
uh, passing out your name tent. So he's available after class. Um, so I've got to post that time. Uh, 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 1130 to 1230 in South 405. Uh, remember, when you go to visit John and ask questions, be sure to um, sign in. So John, um, grab John for a minute there for me. Yeah, John, when people come for uh, your, the review sessions, be sure that you keep a log of that, a written log of that, because they're going to be earning uh, extra credit for that, right? Okay. Remember, it's $2 per session that you attend, and so make sure that John writes your name down so he can give that to me uh, so that I will be able to enter that. Okay. Um, Another time you can come is uh, Friday uh, in the afternoon. Yeah, if you have another class, right that, that's just the the best time I can do. Yeah, so that what what? No, no, no. It's 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 not a mandatory thing, but you do earn the uh, the extra credit uh, currency that you can then spend on you know buying bonus points and things like that, right? That we talked about uh, on the syllabus, right? Okay. Of course, there are other ways of earning that credit as well. Okay. Uh, other than going to, uh, the SI. Okay. Uh, but you can also go Friday in the afternoon as well. Um, and, uh, uh, get help. There may be other times also, uh, when, uh, when you can get help with business calculus there other than when John is there. So I'll have to check out when those, uh, additional times are. Okay. All right. Uh, John is just kind of the preferred time because he's the, the one who's attending class and knows exactly what we're doing and uh, exactly what I'm saying. Um, one other thing to remember, uh, the technology has been working pretty good so far. So um, uh, the, uh, the videos are posted on the Blackboard page under the class notes section. So if you go to the class Blackboard page, um, uh, go to the class notes tab. And you can find the links to the lecture videos if you want to uh, uh, look at those again, review something from the class, or if you miss a class, um, don't want to miss too many of them, though. You'll violate the attendance policy. But if you do have to miss a class, uh, you can look at the lecture video there. And that's where the lecture notes also are posted. Okay, So that's on the Blackboard page, not on the web assigned page. So uh, you'll have to go to the Blackboard page for um, that information. All right. Um, are there any questions now on um, uh, any of the um, homework so far? Okay. So does anybody have any questions that they want to ask that they remember? So when you come across questions that um, uh, that you want to ask, uh, you, of course you can email me. Uh, oftentimes, though, I will just say, uh, please remember, uh, uh, please um, ask that in class. Um, uh, especially if it's a difficult question that's difficult to answer via email. Sometimes math questions are tricky to answer via email. Uh, I might say, oh, ask that in class. Um, um, but uh, uh, if, even if you don't email me, if you run across a problem in the homework right uh, that's giving you uh, difficulty, be sure to write that down or make a note of that so that you can uh, bring that to class and ask me. Uh, and I'll try to make sure that I give you an opportunity to ask those questions uh, each class period. Uh, like I'm doing now. So, any questions that you want to ask about the homework? Yeah. I don't know what it is, what it's called. You don't know what it is, but okay. It's on the first one. On this one? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Let's open it and then you can see if you can remember it. So, do you remember which? question it was? Five? That one? Like that one? No. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good one because we're going to have an example like that today. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, so wait for the example because the example is very similar to this one that we're going to have in the notes. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is an example of evaluating function notation. We talked about function notation last time, and we talked about evaluating function notation, but we didn't do that last time with uh, a, a, a symbolic, uh, with an expression for an input. We just had a number for an input uh, and not an expression like x plus 2 for an input. And that's a little bit trickier uh, because it requires you to remember a little bit of your algebra skills. Okay. And um, the difference between these two expressions sometimes confuse students. Um, 
that's why I asked this question, but we've got an example like that in the uh, in the notes today. Okay, uh, that's one of the first things that we're going to do. All right. Okay. Uh, good. All right. So I think after you see that example, that'll help. Yeah. Uh huh. It would. You didn't get the minimum grade yet. Uh, ask me that. Uh, can, uh, do you have a, a second after class? And let's look at one of those, okay? Because I uh, we can maybe open your particular assignment and look at it, because usually there's some subtle, yeah, that you think you're doing right. It looks like it's right, but that, but I've got this question before because sometimes I get this question. Uh, it um, uh, and it will be slightly incorrect okay yeah did you run out of all of your uh, uh, opportunities because you've got five submissions yeah right yeah okay <laughs> okay all right yeah we'll try um, if we get a, a time a, uh, opening it um, and uh, well actually wait let's go back Let, let's pick one and see um, because other people may have the same question and I may have the same question because I don't do this that often either so do you remember which one not that one like this one that's just plotting points though so that was not too bad make this one Okay, so we want to graph a line that, um, let's see, what does it say? Graph the line that goes through these two points, minus 2, 4, and 5, and 3.5, okay? That one, uh, oh, I see. I didn't even know that, so I was going to ask you... Um, Or graph this line, 3x plus 2. It was wrong. Oh, okay. Okay, well, let's try the whole thing and see if we can do it. All right. So we want to graph the line that goes through minus 2, 4, and 5, and 3.5. Okay. And so how do I do that now? So y'all help me here. What? Click on line. Okay. And... Plot the point first, or start with this point. So minus two and four. Did I get that one right? Is that minus two and four? No, that one's right, right, isn't it? And then we want what? Five and this is the tricky one though, right? Five and three point five. So if I just click on that and scroll down. Oh, I see. And now cheat here a little bit by typing in 0.5. Okay. And how do I finish it off then? Click somewhere? Oh, okay. All right. So, well, that one looks reasonably correct. Okay. All right. All right. And now we want to graph y equals 3x plus 2. Actually, we finished with that one last time, so... Um, uh, uh, let's remind ourselves how to graph a simple uh, uh, formula like that one, okay? Because that was sort of the last thing that we were doing in class. And you probably know how to do this right, okay? So to graph that particular uh, 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 function, that is a function, y equals 3x plus 2, okay? Uh, but to turn that into a graph, you're going to have to, of course, uh, find some points uh, on the uh, uh, graph of that particular uh, function right and then uh, connect them with the appropriate type of curve okay uh, if you don't know what type of curve that you're going to use to connect the points that can be tricky all right because um, uh, that would force you to really plot lots and lots of points uh, to you know to get an idea of what the curve looks like but for many uh, types of functions 
uh, like y equal 3x plus 2, you will know ahead of time what sort of curve you can expect, okay? And this particular, this particular function formula, 3x plus 2, its graph is going to be a straight line, okay? So how do I know that? Well, whenever you're graphing a function formula uh, uh, like this one, and the input variable, which here is x, if that's just raised to the first power, okay, then it's going to be a line, all right? But if you have x squared or x to the third power or a higher power of x, then you're going to get a more exotic curve, and actually the curves can get really complicated really fast, all right? So, um, uh, but if it's just x to the first power, it's going to be a line. Uh, now, when I say if it's just x to the first power, I've got, let, let me make one little uh, uh, warning there. Uh, you cannot be dividing by x to the first power. So if that were 3 divided by x... See, the x would still be to the first power, but that also would not be a line. It's got to be just 3 times x, and x cannot be uh, in the denominator, okay? So if you have just a simple formula like that, you know it's going to be a line. Well, to plot a line, all you need to know are two points on the line, you see, okay? Because there's only one straight line that connects any two points, right? Uh, we just sort of kind of saw that in this example, right? Okay, so if you can find two points on that line, then um, it, you, all you have to do is just draw the line through them, right? And you've got the right graph. Well, so how do we find those two points? Well, that's pretty easy there. Uh, you're just going to manufacture them, okay? So you're going to make a little table of values here, <clears throat> uh, uh, related values x and y, and, uh, and then plot those, uh, 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 those pairs, okay, as points. And how do you find uh, th that table? Just pick any value you want for x, okay? Um, so uh, I like to make it easy on myself. So let's pick x to be 0. And the reason I'm picking x to be 0 is because that is, just makes the arithmetic easy, right? So we'll use an input of 0. x is the input variable here. And when you input uh, 0 here for x, of course, what's the matching y value going to be according to the formula? 2, sure, right, okay? So there is one point on your, um, there is one point on the graph of your straight line, 0 and 2, okay? Now, if you just get another one, uh, you're in good shape, right? Well, just pick another value for x. Um, I don't like to pick them too, so 1 would be a convenient choice. I don't like to pick them too close together, though, because I don't know why, right? But I don't like to pick them too close together, so I'm going to pick x to be 2 instead of um, a 1. So uh, when x is 2, then what's the matching y value? What's the matching output value? Well, 3 times 2 is uh, 6, right? Plus 2 is... 8, right? Okay. And um, so there's our second point on the graph of this particular line. It's 2 and 8. Okay. Um, if you're really nervous uh, about uh, your arithmetic, you can try a third point in also, okay, because um, that kind of gives you a check. So let's try x to be minus 2. I'm going to pick a negative input value here, okay? And let's see, when x is minus 2, let me, let me actually do the arithmetic in this case, so um, on the board. So we have 3 times minus 2 plus 2, right? So that's going to be minus 6 plus 2, which is, um, is that negative 4? So the matching output there is negative 4. So there's a third point um, on the line, uh, negative 2 and negative 4, okay? But uh, two points will do it, okay, uh, for a straight line, right? Okay, so I just included that last one as kind of a check. So, so let's try plotting that. So let's say I have to go back here and choose this one, all right? So, um, and then uh, the first point I want is 0 and 2. So there's 0 and 2. And then the next one I want is 2 and... 8, so I think that's 2 and 8. Did I do that right? Okay. And, um, well, it looks like the right picture there. Okay. And so, but you're saying it wouldn't grade you right? Let's try submitting it now. And uh, you can submit as you go. And so, um, yeah, we got that one right. Okay. Yeah, just do it again and, and then just resubmit. Yeah, okay. So you get um, f uh, uh, five submissions, I think. Uh, actually, well, that's a, I think it's per question, okay, uh, on the homework, right? Okay, yeah. Um, now, on the quiz, however, uh, you haven't gotten to the quiz yet, but on the quiz, I think you have to submit the entire quiz 
uh, at one time. So you cannot go question by question. You get five submissions, but you have to do the entire quiz, okay, uh, at once. All right, so, um, okay. All right, so uh, so if you burn up a submission on one question on a quiz, you're going to be burning up a submission on uh, the rest of the questions too, I think. Okay, they're not independent of one another. I think that's how it works, as I recall. All right. All right, so there's our line graphing widget um, uh, in WebAssign, and there are some other special types of curves uh, you can graph using their graphing widget. This type of curve we're going to use a lot in the class. That's called a parabola. Uh, that, of course, is a circle. I'm not sure we'll be graphing circles in here uh, that often, okay? But we'll, we'll be graphing this type of curve called a parabola. That was really useful um, uh, in this class. Um, okay. All right. So, hey, I got, some, uh, I got some points there in my homework. Nice. All right. Other questions there? Okay. Uh, that anybody want to know about? All right, excellent. So, um, so try to get that up to 88, and then that algebra review. Try to get that one up to 82 uh, uh, at least. These, of course, you want as close to 100 as you can get, right? Okay, because those are actually going into uh, your grade book. All right. So those two are going to be counting against your homework average, and this one's going to be counting against your uh, this one's going to be counting against your quiz average. All right. So let's get back to the notes now, so we can uh, uh, get far enough so that you can. Um, uh, get started on, uh, uh, get finished with that part one uh, algebra review and get started, at least started, we'll see how far we make it today, uh, on that part two. So, um, this is where we stopped the notes last time, and we were talking about functions. So, remember, a function is a, um, that's a type of relation. Remember, a relation is just a, 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 the mathematical term for a, 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 a rule or a system that we use to uh, connect two quantities, right? Uh, it's a rule or a system that we use to uh, take a known quantity or a measurable quantity, and we use that to uh, determine or predict an unknown quantity or a quantity that's difficult to measure. But a function is a special type of relation. Remember, that's a relation where each input... Remember, the input is the known quantity, uh, 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 results in exactly one output, exactly one output. And the output is the, that's the unknown quantity or the quantity that you're trying to predict or determine using uh, your function, okay? And we, uh, just at the end of class last time, we mentioned that um, we usually uh, have functions, uh, 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 functions are rules, okay? And those function rules are usually expressed to us in one of three ways, okay? Uh, either as a table of input-output pairs, okay? Uh, that's a useful way of expressing functions. Or as a formula, that's a second uh, uh, useful way of expressing functions. But a third useful way is graphs, okay? Graphs of sets of points. And actually, that uh, uh, problem uh, demonstrated all three, right? We were switching from a formula to a table and then to a graph, okay? And the reason that we want to be able to do that is because these different methods of expressing uh, function rules uh, 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 give us different information about the relationship between the quantities, okay? So they're useful in different uh, situations to answer different types of questions. You're going to see examples of that, I hope, uh, today, okay? I, I try to include examples of... Uh, why we care about graphs uh, uh, or why we care about formulas uh, in the uh, uh, in our uh, examples all right but here is a uh, uh, here's a simple graph okay so uh, this also is a, supposed to be a straight line my lines when I draw them by hand are you know sometimes a little bit wiggly because my hand is shaky sometimes right but that's supposed to be a straight line and um, uh, and so the question here, though, is does that particular uh, a straight line, does that express a function? In other words, uh, uh, is um, the quantity y, which is supposed to be the output here, is that a function of the quantity x? So if you know the value of x, can you use this graph to determine uh, one and only one value for y? So what do you say there? Yes, yeah, that is an example. Uh, that is an example of a function, right? Because if you are given a value for x, uh, let's say for instance two, 
So I think this is two on the x-axis. Then you're going to find one and only one matching y value. In this case, uh, the matching y value would be, uh, is that five? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, right? Okay, so the matching y value there is uh, five. Uh, if you want to uh, take that information, that, uh, 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 that five is the output value that matches the uh, input value two for this particular function, and you want to express that in mathematical notation, and you don't want to have to write that out in a bunch of words, the way you would do that, of course, is you, first you have to pick a name for your function. So let's pick our favorite name for this function. Let's call that f. All right, so f is the function rule. In this case, f is actually the graph, right? And we would write down in function notation that f of 2 is equal to 5, right? Okay, when the input is 2, right, the matching output here according to this function rule, according to this graph, is 5. But in general, you did tell me that uh, uh, in this graph, y is a function of x, okay? And the way you could express that statement, y is a function of x, in mathematical notation is write this equation, okay? And remember, you read that, y equals f of x, but what that means is y is a function of x. Uh, 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 if you know a value for x, you can find, using this graph, one and only one matching value for uh, y, okay? So the answer to the question is uh, yes, okay? Y is a function of x, and the reason is, well, I've said it like three times now, okay? Each input results, for this graph, each input results in exactly one matching output, okay? When the answer is yes uh, to this question, you know, is one quantity a function of an, an another, the explanation is always the same. Ah, uh, yes, each input results in exactly one output. All right, now, look at this graph on the other hand. That is a pretty nice graph. So that is also a relation. It's supposed to be a circle, but it's a little bit lopsided, okay? Um, that graph is also a relation, okay? Because that graph express, expresses a relationship between the quantity x and the quantity y. So it is a relation, but the uh, uh, more important question for us is, is this a function? So what would you say? No, yeah. Here, the answer is no, okay? Not a function, all right? So it is not correct to write y equals f of x here, all right? That is not correct for this graph, all right? Okay, and if I ask you for an explanation, you, what would you say, okay? So if I ask you to explain y is not a function of x, let's get an explanation. Uh, oh, I'm going to ask someone, though. Robert. Robert Abiero? Is Robert here? Uh, Robert, okay. So on a test, okay, um, you're going to help the class with this question on a test because it will be on a test. If I say, yeah, okay, uh, you're, you're correct, Robert, y is not a function of x, but why not, okay, what would what would you say? I mean, like looking from the graph, like... Yeah, looking from the graph, why, uh, why is it that uh, y is not a function of x? Yeah, no, I do not want the answer of the vertical line test, okay? Uh, that's the kind of the shorthand answer that students are trying to give, but, uh, but there's a reason why the vertical line test works, okay? And so I want you to kind of get back to the, uh, uh, to the heart of the matter here and explain it a little bit uh, deeper to, for me, okay? Yeah, all right, so does that help? Okay, yeah, go ahead. There's lots of inputs because there's lots of x values. I mean, yeah, but they all have to have like one output, right? Yeah, so if it's a function, they all have to have one output. So you're saying it's not a function. So logically, that means that there's got to be an input that has more than one output, right? Okay, so can you give me an example of one? What's an input that has more than one output here? Uh, uh, for like uh, x equals 1, it has... How many outputs? What? Two. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Robert got it exactly right there. Because if we let X be the input here, you're going to have two different matching outputs, right? One of them is going to be up here, but there's going to be another one, what? Down there, right? Okay. And see, that's what prevents it from being a function, right? See, that input uh, 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 one has two different 
matching outputs there, okay? That's what I would want you to write down, okay? So you could say, no, um, uh, 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 when x equals 1, you might be able to say it a little bit more succinctly than this, there are um, two matching outputs, right? And so that keeps it from being a, um, that keeps it from being a function. Now, Robert, uh, uh, okay, I, I, now you said vertical line test. So do you see why your answer relates to the vertical line test now? Yeah, yeah explain that for the class, would you? Okay. <laughs> the, the line passes through more than... Uh, Which line? I mean, well, you, like the vertical line that you draw. Which it's which vertical through. which That's vertical line though? What do you mean which? <laughs> well, I could draw lots of vertical lines there, right? Okay, so. Right, well, for like on x equals one. Ah, I... there we go. Right. Okay. So if I drew a vertical line through x equals one, right? Okay. If I drew a vertical line through x equals one, go ahead, Robert. Uh, it, passes, it passes through more than uh, one point. Yeah, it passes through more than one point on the curve, right? Okay, and the reason that happens because x equal 1 has two different outputs, right? You see, okay, so yeah, so if we drew this vertical line, it would slice through the curve in, in two points because there are two outputs there that match uh, the input x equal 1. See, that's why the vertical line test works, right, okay, because there is more than one matching output for uh, the input 1. See, I could have drawn a vertical line over here, though. That's why I, was, I had to make you say specifically which vertical line because... I could have drawn a vertical line over there, and that didn't cross through it at all, you see. Okay, right, okay. All right, so that's, uh, that's the famous vertical line test, okay? Uh, if, you can, if you've got a curve and you can draw a vertical line, some vertical line, that uh, it only takes one, okay? In this one, you can draw a, a, a many, okay? But if you can draw some vertical line that will slice through the curve in more than one point, that means that, that there's going to be, for that input, that means for some input, there's going to be more than one matching output, and that keeps it from being a um, that keeps it from being a function. You see, okay? All right. Uh, so we got that done. Okay. Now let's look at uh, an applied graph example. All right. And because we're going to look at a lot of applied graph examples here, so this is not just uh, some abstract graph, but this actually uh, 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 has a context to it. Okay. So what this graph, I mean this graph right here. Uh, shows is the uh, uh, the approximate population in millions uh, of the U.S. So this is the population in millions. Okay. So obviously it's not going to be just the population of the U.S. There, right? Okay. Uh, that's measured in millions. Uh, a, a certain elapsed number of years after 1900. Now. Uh, 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 in, in this class, we often use time as an input quantity, okay? But um, uh, sometimes when you're using time as an input quantity, uh, it gets a little bit inconvenient, uh, especially if, the, if you're measuring the time in years, okay? Uh, because calendar year, uh, calendar years are kind of large. You see, like the year now is... Um, 2016, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, it's 2016, correct? And that's kind of a large number. And so um, to avoid uh, sometimes working with uh, 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 big input numbers uh, when we're uh, uh, using time as input, we will use what's called a, a lapse time. So that's when we'll, we'll start measuring time from a particular instant, okay? Well, actually, that's the way calendar years works anyway because you know you measure calendar years from a particular instant, uh, what is supposed to be the birth of Christ. Right. Okay. This is 2016 years after the year in which uh, Jesus was born. Right. Okay. Uh, but that's been a long time ago. So I'm going to shift uh, uh, my elapsed time here from uh, uh, from when uh, 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 Jesus was born to uh, uh, 1900. Okay. So our input here is elapsed years after 1900. So for instance, 120 would be what year? 2020, right, okay, 120 years after uh, 1900, all right? Okay, so uh, that's the first question there on the example. It says, give a description of the units of measure for the input and output, okay? So for the output there, the unit of measure, that is uh, 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 millions of people, okay? Millions of people, right? So we're measuring our output in millions, and the input is elapsed time, elapsed years from the year 1900, okay? 
And <clears throat> uh, the reason that I, uh, uh, especially in this uh, course, why we have to stress the units of measure for the input and output is because uh, 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 that's going to help us with our interpretations, okay? Uh, and that's what's coming up. Uh, in the next few questions. All right, so I'll write that into the notes before I post them. But the, uh, the uh, output measure is millions of persons. Uh, the input measure is elapsed years from 1900, okay? All right, so first question, what does that question mean? So what am I asking there when I write y equals f of t? Is it a function? Is it a function, right, okay? So is that curve a function, right? Is that curve a function? Yes, right, okay, because each input there is going to result in just exactly one output, right? There's no way to pick an input where you're going to have two different matching outputs, right, okay? All right, so the answer to that one is pretty obvious. Uh, that one is just yes, all right, okay. Now, next one, we're going to call this curve F, all right? So um, next question here is, it says interpret f of 40, interpret f of 40. Notice that is not evaluate f of 40. So that does not say evaluate f of 40, okay? Uh, it just says interpret. So interpret just means what is this, what is the meaning of this expression? What are we trying to communicate when we write down f of 40, okay? This is the first sort of question that you're going to get tripped up on on the test, and it's so easy, okay? So what does f of 40 mean? Is it Balkis? Balkis, yeah, okay. Balkis? Bilkis. Okay, all right. So Bilkis, um, uh, 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 on a test, when I write, when I say interpret f of 40, um, what would you put? Okay, so uh, got half of it right, okay? So it, the 40 means 1940, all right? But that's just the 40 by itself, all right? But when you write f of 40, you mean more, okay? So what does the whole expression f of 40 mean, okay? It does mean something about 1940, all right? But what about 1940, all right? So you kind of got it halfway right there, okay? 1940 is the year, but what does f of 40 mean, okay? So yeah, you, you just interpreted the 40 part of that expression, but you didn't interpret the f of 40 part, okay? Can someone help Belkis? So what does she have to add there to get the interpretation? Yeah, Jody, is it? Oh, Joby. Yeah, the population in 1940. You see the difference there? Okay, yeah, okay, right, okay. Yeah, the, everyone makes that mistake uh, first time they try doing this, okay? They just uh, uh, see the 40, okay, and they think, okay, I, I know that means the last year, so that's 1940. But F of 1940 means the population in 1940, okay? All right. <clears throat> so be careful about that. Now, see, I didn't tell you to um, uh, 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 evaluate uh, f of uh, uh, 40, okay? So I didn't say, tell me what the population was. That's pretty easy to do, but I, that's not what the question was, okay? It just says, um, uh, 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 what does that expression mean? And that's what that expression means, the population in 1940. It's the D part now that is the uh, 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 evaluation part, okay? So evaluation evaluate f of 120 means actually tell me what is the value of f of 120, okay? So Danny, Danny, where's Danny? Danny Ramos here? I heard him. Is that you? Oh, okay. So Danny, you got the, this is actually the easy question, all right? So uh, can you see it there? It's kind of hard to see, but <laughs> okay, yeah, give it a shot there, all right? I don't know if I can blow that up very easily, okay? So Maybe the people sitting in front can help you. But if you were going to evaluate f of 120 using the graph there, Danny, what would you do? Okay, so how do I plug in 120 for x with the graph? You just go to 120. All right, so there's the 120, and then what do I do? Oh, you go up and see what? Yeah, where the y value is, right. Okay, all right. So we go across here, and what does that look like? About what? 
400 yeah there you are okay right so uh so you if you squint you'll see that f of 120 is uh 400 okay right that's all you have to write down you don't have to according to the instructions you don't have to actually interpret that okay uh but danny if i did say interpret it the fact that f of 120 equals 400 what does that mean in the context of the problem In 2020, there, yeah, that's right. Our predicted population is going to be 400 million. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, that is the interpretation. Okay, very good. Okay, see, this is y'all are recalling all of this very good. And finally, now, this is one reason now why graphs are useful. Okay, because you can answer questions like this one. Uh, much, uh, or you can at least uh, get decent estimates uh, for questions like this one. Uh, much easier looking at a graph sometimes than you can if you had a formula, for instance. So the question here is, when did the population of the United States first reach 200 million? Okay, I happen to remember this. This happened when I was a child, and this was a this was a big deal at the time. Okay. Um, um, when the population first reached 200 million. So how would you answer that? What would we do there? Yeah, we're going to go backwards here, right? Okay, so we're going to do exactly opposite of what Danny did, right? Okay, we would find the population 200 million there, right? There's the population 200 million, and then we would try to go across and read what's the input that matches that, right? Okay, so let's see if we can figure that out. If we go across there and come down, what does that look like? Maybe right there? Yeah, I'm thinking right there, and that is what? 1970, okay. Ah, that's pretty close, actually. All right. Ah, okay. So according to the graph, that looks like uh, uh, that happened at t equals 70, which would be the year 1970. Okay. Actually, that happened in 1967. All right. So we're not far off there. Okay. Yeah, the population first reached 200 million in 1967. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> ah, finally, now we're to Summer's question. OK. All right. So suppose we're at now. So here we don't have a, a function given to us in context. OK. We just have this formula. We're not told anything about what the input quantity is or what the output quantity is. So we really don't know much about how this function is being used in practice. But we're asked to evaluate each of the following inputs. OK. So we're asked to evaluate each of the following inputs. OK. And so let's uh, we'll try the first one by hand, and then I'm going to let y'all do a few of them, and then we'll share our answers. Okay? Or we'll try the first couple there, uh, 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 and then I'll let you share your answers. All right? So f of minus two, that's so easy, right? Okay? To evaluate f of minus two, you're just going to plug minus two in for the input variable, right? So you get two times minus two squared plus three times minus two. Uh, minus one, and then you just have to carry out that arithmetic. Okay. All right. Um, one thing I want to show you that I did when I substituted the minus two into the expression, um, because that is a negative number that I'm plugging into an expression, I like to put that in parentheses. That's called safe math. So you always want to practice safe math. So when you are plugging a negative number into an expression, Okay, uh, it's good to put it in parentheses. Okay, that will help you avoid sign mistakes. All right, so let's see um, how do we simplify now uh, this expression? Well, remember in your order of operations, let's see, let's square first, right? Exponents come first in the order of operations. So what's minus 2 squared? Four. 4, right. So you have 2 here times 4, positive 4, and then what's 3 times minus 2? Negative 6 minus 1. So this turns out to be 8 minus 6 minus 1. That's pretty easy. That's just 1. Okay? Right. So you get there uh, a matching output of 1. What about f of a? There you're evaluating a symbolic input, but it works exactly the same. Works exactly the same, right? You just plug in that expression a into your formula for x. So you have 2 times a squared 
plus 3 times a minus 1. And now you try to simplify that expression. And, well, you can't simplify that expression, right? Because um, there's no like terms to add together there. So there you're done. Okay, that was so easy, right? Uh, there's the final answer is just 3a squared. Uh, sorry, 2a squared plus 3a minus 1. Okay, uh, here's the tricky one now. So let, I'll let you start this one, but uh, I'm going to start you, uh, help you start this one, but I want you to finish it. Okay, this is the one you'll miss on your test, and you, you'll be uh, uh, banging your head against the wall because it's so easy. Okay, all right, so we want to evaluate f of x plus h, f of x plus h. Same idea, you're going to take that expression right, and you're going to plug that whole expression, x plus h, in for x. So write this down very carefully. This is 2 times x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h. See, everywhere I see the x in the formula, I'm going to plug in the whole quantity x plus h. All right. And now, now that's about halfway finished. So if you wrote that on the test, you'd probably get some partial credit, but you wouldn't get full credit because now what I want you to do is simplify this expression. So I want you to square the x plus h. I want you to multiply the 3 times the x plus h. And then if you have any similar terms, any like terms, I want you to add them together for me, okay, to finish simplifying that. All right, go for it, okay. Try doing that. I'm going to time you here. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Should I finish the C? We're going to do the D next, so if you want to go on and start the D, you can. Remember now, when we're doing these uh, things in class, uh, you can talk with your neighbor, okay? So uh, if you have a question about something, uh, uh, please uh, uh, don't uh, be shy about uh, talking to your neighbor. I want you to get to know the people around you, okay? Uh, I want you to make friends with the people around you. So you'll be able to help each other, uh, uh, not just in class, but uh, throughout the semester, okay? So if you said, Ugh, I can't remember how to square x plus h. Can't remember how to do that. Help me. Smart person next to me, help me, okay? Now, the only time you can't get help from your neighbor is during the test. That, that you can't do, okay? But, but when we're just doing things like this, you can, okay? Everyone signed the attendance? Last chance. Oh, one thing on the attendance, be sure that you, you sign it the way you... Um, uh, make sure it's legible, but use your normal signature, okay? But make sure it's legible. So if you uh, have some signature that you perfected for your checks or something, right, okay, then don't use that because I'm not going to be able to read that, right, okay? But make sure it's your normal signature because if I start seeing some signature that doesn't look like the way you've signed it in the past, I'm going to start thinking, ooh, that person didn't sign that. Uh, the same time both times okay so something fishy is going on right okay all right all right so let's do this now let's expand this expression and simplify it okay Natalie where's Natalie Natalie's got a hard one here she's got to help us with okay Natalie tell me what you wrote down here okay so what'd you do first Oh, so, okay, so what Natalie did is uh, a, a, a classic error. Sorry, Natalie. Okay, yeah, you made a classic mistake there, okay, in the order of operations, all right? Uh, what Natalie did, this is an easy mistake to make, though, okay, but you don't want to make it uh, more than once, all right? So um, uh, what Natalie did was multiply first 
into the parentheses before she squared, and that violates the order of operations because in the order of operations, uh, uh, exponents come before multiplication. Okay, so that's a mistake people make all the time. All right, so uh, so you want to do this square first. Okay, you want to do that square first. Okay, so uh, the way to do that is I'm going to write it out like this. What does it mean when you square a quantity? It means you multiply it by itself, right? So let's just write that down. Let's just write x plus h twice, okay? Right? And then we'll just keep, I'll just keep everything else the same. All right? All right, now, Natalie, let's multiply. Now, Natalie, if you wanted to, you could multiply the 2n times this x plus h, okay? But notice you won't multiply the 2n times this one. Or you could go ahead and multiply first the x plus h times the x plus h, and then multiply the two. And that's actually what I'm going to do first. Okay? I'm going to say multiplying that two for last because the, the multiplying the two in is easy part. Okay? The hard part here is multiplying the x plus h times the x plus h. So when you multiply x plus h times x plus h, what does that give you, Natalie? What is x plus h times x plus h? Okay, so you have x times x, right, is x squared, and then what else? Plus what? Uh, yeah, plus h squared. Okay, so let's write that in. I'm going to write that at the end. All right, so you've got that. Plus what else, though? Yeah, so this is, I, I see you've forgotten how to multiply your, your binomials, okay? But you are not the only one. All right, trust me. All right. All right, so when you multiply x plus h times x plus h, here's what's going to happen. Take every term here, the x and the h, and multiply it by every term here, the x and the h, okay? Multiply everything by everything. That's called the distributed property, all right? So x times x is what? We wrote that down. That's x squared, okay? Then you're going to have x times h, see? x times h, all right, and I'm going to, so that's x times h, but I'm going to write that in alphabetical order. So I'm going to write that as hx. And there's, the reason I write it in alphabetical order is it helps me find the like terms easier. So we have x times h, and then you have h times x again, you see. Okay, so you get that again. And then finally, can you all see that? That's h times x. And then finally, Natalie, you get the h times the h is the h squared, okay? So you end up with actually a bunch of multiplications there, right? Okay. Um, all right, now, so we got that multiplied together. Now, I haven't multiplied in the 2 yet, okay? I'll do that in just a second. Now, I've got 3 times x plus h, but that's pretty easy. What's 3 times x plus h, Natalie? What now? 3x and what? Plus 3h. Okay, yeah, you're going to multiply the 3 times both of these things, okay? 3 times x and 3 times h, all right? And then don't forget, and so it's so easy to forget this because you, you're so obsessed by these first two terms. You have added on at the end there minus 1, okay? So let me leave that. Now let's keep going, and now I'm going to multiply in the 2. Finally, I'm going to multiply in that 2. So don't forget, Natalie, you're going to multiply the 2 times everything, because the 2 is outside the parentheses here, you're going to multiply it by everything in there. So that gives me what, Natalie? 2x squared plus what? Plus 2hx plus 2hx plus 2h squared. And then I had what? Uh, 3x plus 3h minus 1. Now you just add the similar terms together. Okay, so anything that similar terms, you add them together. Do we have any similar terms here? Yeah, we have these, these, these two terms, right? But there are not too many similar terms. So we end up there with, what's the final simplified result? 2x squared plus 4hx and plus 2h squared plus, there's a lot to write out, plus 3x plus 3h minus 1. And none of those other terms can be added together. So there's the final, there's the final result. Okay? All right? Yeah, see, that, that was a tough one. That's a tough one. Okay? But you did a good job. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, 
Now, there's another mistake that you might have made. Maybe this is what Gerard's going to ask me now here, okay? Uh, there's another mistake that you might have made. Uh, one mistake that's easy to make there is multiplying the 2n first uh, to the h plus x, I mean the x plus h. Another thing is, Gerard, did you do this? When you're trying to square x plus h, it's very tempting to write that that is x squared plus h squared. Did you make that mistake? No, I, I had a completely different question. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, all right, so, uh, uh, all right, so, but here's a mistake. Someone did make it, even if Gerard didn't. Someone made this mistake, okay? When they were squaring x plus h, they wrote x squared plus h squared. That mistake is called freshman's dream, okay? Yeah, that's, that's the mistake. That's what that's called. And, um, uh, and so it's almost correct, but notice when you square x plus h, you get a lot more than just x squared plus h squared, right? Because you also get what? Those two middle terms, right? You see? Okay. So if you just wrote x plus h squared is x squared plus h squared, you would have le left off the middle terms and then you still would have had a mistake. That's another mistake that is so easy to make. Okay. All right. All right, Gerard, I'm sorry. What was your question? Uh, so, so basically at the end, you know how you had switched the h and the x alphabetically? Yeah, you know why I did that? That was so that I could see that these are like terms. Right. So let's just say that. You know, oh, I wrote X, you wrote a, a, a X H at the end. Um, well, hypothetically speaking, let's just say we didn't do the alphabetic order thing. Mm -hmm. So one would be H X and one would be X H, right? Uh huh. So oh, and you didn't combine them. Right. So I'm saying because if they're in different, I guess order. I mean, are they still considered alike? Yeah, they're still considered alike because that's called the commutative property of multiplication. Uh, h times x is the same as x times h. So switching it alphabetically is unmandatory? No, but you've got to know to add the terms together. Right. Yeah, so okay. Yeah, that would still be correct, yeah. But these two things are the same uh, because that's, uh, it doesn't matter which order you multiply uh, quantities in, right? You get the same result all the time. So these two things are really the same. So you do have to know to add them together. Uh, that you have to do, okay? But if you wrote a 4xh or 4hx, that's I irrelevant, okay? Yeah, just as long as you come up with one term instead of two. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean uh, some partial credit? Yeah. yeah, sometimes you can get partial credit, yeah, if you just make a small mistake at the end, okay? Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, I do get partial credit, so that's why I don't like to give multiple choice tests because um, yeah, it's hard for me to get partial credit on multiple choice tests. However, uh, now what makes this class a little bit different from an algebra class is, see, in an algebra class, you would be just, this would be the problem you see, and this would be the answer. But in the calculus class, we're going beyond algebra. So what will happen is this will be the first part of a bigger question, you see, okay? That will be step one of a harder question. And then if you mess up step one, then you're doomed in step two, you see, okay? All right, so that's the catch there. All right, these are the two now that I kind of uh, were like... Um, the, one, the questions that some are asked in the homework, okay? What's the difference between these two expressions, all right? What's the difference between these two expressions? All right, so I'm not going to actually uh, completely simplify these. I will when I post the notes, but I'm going to show you just now what the difference is in these two expressions when you evaluate them. So if you evaluate f of uh, a minus 2, what that means is you're going to plug a into the formula for f, Okay, you're going to put, let's go back there and remind ourselves what that is. So there's the formula for F, right? So this says we plug A into the formula for F, and then what, after we're done with simplifying that, then, then we subtract 2. So that would look like what? 2A squared plus 3 times A minus 1, and then we just subtract 2 from the whole thing. You see, all of this is F of A, right? All of that is f of a, and then we subtract 2, okay? Well, that's pretty easy. Actually, I can finish that, right? Because that's just going to be what? 2a squared 
plus 3a what? Minus 3? Yeah. Okay. So that one's so easy. But this one's a little bit, the second one's a little bit trickier. Okay. Because that means, see, notice the, the just we place the parentheses in the different place, right? That makes this one a little bit harder. This means the whole quantity a minus 2 is going to be plugged into the formula for f. So you would get 2 times a minus 2 squared plus 3 times a minus 2 minus 1. See the difference there? Okay. So here we take all of a minus 2 and we plug that in for x in the formula. Here we're just plugging a in for x in the formula and then after all that we're subtracting 2. Right. So in this one you've got to now simplify that expression okay so that means you've got to square a minus 2 and remember it's not what it's not a squared minus 4 right right not a squared minus 4 right okay yeah it's a harder than that okay <laughs> to square a minus 2 you've got to take a minus 2 and multiply it by a minus 2 and you end up with a middle term okay you end up with a middle term okay and then you've got to take the 3 times the a minus 2 and then the minus 1 and then you've got to add the like terms together okay so so there's a little bit of work left to do in simplifying this um, in simplifying this expression what's the difference between these two expressions yeah the first one takes just whatever f of x is and multiplies the whole thing by 2. In this one, you're taking the quantity 2x and you're plugging it in for x in the function formula. You see? So this would say, okay, I'm going to take 2 times whatever f of x is. What was f of x? Let's go up there and remember. It was what? 2x squared plus 3x minus 1, right? So you get 2 times, what did I say there? 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. See, all of that is f of x, remember? Okay, all of that's f of x, and then you're just multiplying all of that by 2. Well, that's pretty easy. That's just 4x squared plus 6x minus 2. So that one's not so bad. But here, you're taking the 2x and you're plugging it in for x in the function formula. So this would be um, 2 times 2x squared plus 3 times 2x and then minus 1. See, I'm going to take the 2x, the whole quantity 2x, and I'm going to plug it in for x in my formula for f of x. So I get 2 times 2x squared plus 3 times 2x minus 1. Okay. And then you have to simplify uh, this. Now, this one's not so bad to simplify. Let me go ahead and finish simplifying it. So, do the exponent first. What's 2x squared? Yeah, that's, and you're multiplying it by the 2, don't forget. So, that's 4x squared. 2x squared is, 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared, right? And then what's 3 times 2x? 6x, and then minus 1, right? So, we end up with 8x squared plus 6x minus 1. And finally, that last part, Can we leave the I'll save that one for next time. What? That's what I wrote, right? Two or four yeah. yeah, 2 squared and x squared. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You know how to avoid thinking about that? Just remind yourself always, what does it mean to square a quantity? times it by itself. So this 2x squared means 2x times 2x, right? And what's 2x times 2x? That's 4x squared, right? That's how I got the 4x squared, you see. Okay. I'll save this question for next time. All right, last thing here I want to talk about, okay, uh, 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 to... Um, uh, uh, finish up these notes, okay, is um, uh, what we mean by domain and range. So here are two more terms, okay, two more terms 
uh, uh, that uh, that we associate with functions, all right? So when you have a function, you have to start with a function. Every function has a domain, and every function has what's called a range, okay? The domain is just the set of numbers. It's a set of numbers. It's not a single number. The domain is the set of numbers that you can use as input for the function, okay? So the whole set of numbers that you can use as inputs for the function, that is the domain. So domain goes with input. Domain goes with input, okay? But domain is a set of inputs, all right? <clears throat> and range always goes with output. Range is the set of numbers that you get as output values from a function, okay? So it's not a single number, but it's a set of numbers, okay? So it's a whole collection of numbers. All the numbers that you can get as output values from a function, that's called the range of the function. Ah, so here we have a function represented by a graph, okay? And here's a good case of where representing a function by a graph is useful because that's going to help us figure out here what the domain and range for this particular function is, okay? Well, I already gave away the answer to part one, but what is that uh, part A? What is that part A asking me? Is it a function? Is, a function? is that a function? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Because? Yeah, each input has one output, right, yeah. So if you read that graph, you can see that each input there has just one output. Now, what this graph shows you is the concentration in the blood, okay, of Tylenol, that's acetaminophen, uh, of Tylenol uh, after you've taken uh, two Tylenol uh, caplets, okay? So this shows you the concentration in your blood uh, after you, uh, of Tylenol after you've taken... Uh, two Tylenol caplets. Well, of course, what happens uh, 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 when you take t uh, the two Tylenol? At first, right, the blood concentration rises quite rapidly, right? Okay. And then, of course, what happens after a while, though? Yeah, the Tylenol wears off, right? Okay. So um, uh, 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 your liver will begin to, and your kidneys will begin to, uh, uh, Tylenol is not a natural part of your bloodstream, right? Okay. So your liver and your kidneys will start uh, uh, filtering that Tylenol out of your blood. Okay. So you'll see here after about four hours, uh, if you're taking Tylenol for fever or something, what's going to happen? The effect is going to go away, right? Okay, so your fever will come back, or your uh, your aches or pains, right? Okay, uh, will come back because the uh, the Tylenol is being filtered out of your bloodstream, right? Okay, uh, by your organs, all right? Okay, so that's all that uh, that's all that graph uh, shows. So the answer to uh, part one there is yes, of course. That is that graph is a function. We can use it as a function, and the reason is each input matches just one output. Our input here is elapsed time again. Our input here is elapsed time. This is elapsed hours since we took the uh, Tylenol, right? Okay. And the output here is the blood concentration. This is measured in uh, kind of a fancy unit of measure. This is in microgram micrograms of the Tylenol per milliliter of blood. Okay. So micrograms of Tylenol per milliliter of, uh, milliliter of blood. Here's the sort of question now that uh, uh, graphs can really help you answer, okay? And this might be a question that you're interested in. Uh, if, when is the, after you've consumed that Tylenol, when is the blood concentration the maximum? So when are you going to start feeling the best there after you've taken the Tylenol? Yeah, see, that's what's so easy to read that off of the graph, right? It looks like right before one hour, right? Okay. So we might, because there's where the blood concentration is maximum. What does that look like? At about T equals, what would y'all say there? 0.8. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So the blood concentration is maximum at about T equals 0.8, something like that. Okay. So a little bit under an hour, maybe 45 minutes. That's when we really start feeling the effect there, the maximum effect of uh, the Tylenol, okay? Very easy to see that on the graph, but if you had this as a formula, it'd be, very hard, it'd be much harder to answer this question, right? Okay.
uh, but from the graph, very easy to answer that sort of question. And what is the domain of this function? So looking at the graph there, what numbers can we use as inputs? It starts at zero, right? Okay, it starts at zero, obviously, because this is elapsed time. So you, you don't usually have negative elapsed time, right? Okay, so the input numbers we can use begin at zero, but they don't end at four. Okay, that is what is a little bit tricky here. All right. Um, even though I don't uh, 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 have the uh, x-axis here graphed past four, this curve does extend past four. Okay, that curve does extend past four. Okay, if I wanted to indicate that the curve stopped at four, I would put a dot here at the end of the curve. So since you don't see a dot there, you just have to assume that the curve extends. So if the curve really does extend, our inputs really go out to what? Yeah, really to infinity, right? We really don't know uh, how far the domain extends. So since we don't know explicitly, explicitly how far the domain extends, we just have to assume, well, that just goes on indefinitely, okay? All right, so let's write down that domain. I'm going to write it down using interval notation uh, because um, I could write it out in words, but that's a little bit ugly. So in interval notation, here's the way this looks, okay? Where does our domain start at? Zero, including zero, okay? And I know zero is included because I've got that closed dot there at zero. And where does it extend to? Yeah, y'all told me infinity. How do we write infinity in math notation? That's the sideways eight, right, okay? And that you cannot include in the domain because there is no really number called infinity, right? That's just an idea. And so you put a parenthesis beside the infinity to show that's really not part of the domain. So square bracket means that boundary is part of the domain. This means the boundary not part of the domain. What about the range now? So what are the set of output here? Where do our outputs begin at? Where do our y values begin at? Zero, yeah, okay, obviously. And go up to where? About 16, yeah, okay, approximately there, 16. And see, that's easy to read off of the graph, that range. That's, see, that's why graphs are nice, helps us see the range. I'll write that as 0, 16. I'm going to include 16 in my range, so I'm going to put a square bracket there. I'm really not sure if 16 is in the range or not, but that's the best I can see from looking at the graph. Oh, wait, we're not through yet. we got three minutes. Okay, now we have to use all of our time. All right. Well, I'm not going to get this question completely done, but you're going to get a feel now for what's coming up. All right. Here's the same question, but ask from a formula. All right. So what this ugly formula shows you is the food price index. Okay. So the uh, uh, food price index is a, a way we measure the price of food. Okay. All right. And so that gives us an idea of uh, uh, what, what uh, uh, food costs. Okay. So this says the food price index, a model for that between the years 2000 and 2010. Okay, notice it's very explicit. This is only from 2000 to 2010, okay, um, is given by this formula, okay, where the input is elapsed years from years 2000, okay. So where does T start at? Z oh, be careful. T is elapsed years, okay. So where would T start at? Zero, zero, yeah. Uh, uh, this is elapsed years from the year 2000. So the T starts at zero and goes up to what? What's the biggest value we'll use for T? 10, okay. Because when what, what year does this uh, uh, model stop at? 2010, okay. So our domain for this function is zero to 10, okay. It's telling us something about the years 2000 to 2010, but because we're measuring time in elapsed years, we would say the domain is 0 to 10. Uh, here's the question. All right, so when was food most expensive during this time period? Is that easy to see from the formula? I have no idea, okay? Yeah, I mean, look, that, look at that ugly formula with all those decimal points. Who knows, right? So if you're going to answer this type of question, ideally you would be looking at what? 
not this formula, but a what? Graph. Graph, right, okay. So we're going to try to answer this question by taking that formula and converting it to a graph, see? Okay, that's why graphs are so helpful. They can help us answer questions like this much more easily, right? Okay, now, how in the world are we going to make this graph? Well, I'm not going to try to do that by hand because I'll be here all day. Okay, so we're going to use the computer to help us make this graph, all right? And that's what I'll show you next time. Here's the site that we'll use to help us, and that site works so good, we'll be able to answer this question in a jiffy, okay? All right, because we understand what we're going to do here, right? Okay, to answer this question. All right, great. We're right at 11.15. Don't forget about your homeworks. Get enrolled. Get those homeworks done, okay? I'll see you on Monday. Yes.